Sola me, 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 me. I am my own witness. Follow me, the anti-missionary rabbi who wants to lead you away from eternal life. And Christians just took my, our writings and stuck it in their translations, never asking any questions. Or we go with the three witnesses. Who do you want to go with? I want to go with the three witnesses. I got not only the LXX and the Brit Shah, I got the verbal testimony of a living epistle, Stephen, and I even got the Hebrew upon which the LXX Septuagint was based on. Three witnesses. You want more? We don't need more. And they're all credible. You listen to what I'm telling you. When you start questioning the Brit Shah, as equally inspired to the Torah, you are on the verge of being history in terms of e effecting the kingdom of Yahweh for permanent change. If you're questioning it, you are in trouble. And I want you to see someone, it doesn't have to be me, it could be Rabbi Rob, it could even be, even be Rabbi Gordon, my brother, on the front row, any rabbi, and get help quick before you leave this conference. When you start questioning the because you've been lied to, to question the Brit Shah, but you don't ask the same, you don't use, we're not using equal weights and measures, and we're not asking the same questions of the Tanakh. <laughs> we're not asking those questions, we're not holding the Tanakh to the same standard. I think you get the message. Can I show you something else that will blow your mind? What time do we have? Or don't we have, should I say? Four what time don't we have, brother? Four o'clock. Who? Four o'clock. Huh? <laughs> no speaking the English. <laughs> I like to teach. Let me teach. Yes. More. Uh, four o'clock, okay. So we'll do one more and then we'll take a few questions and we'll try. Okay, Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Devorim 32.8. So next time the anti missionary rolls around and says, listen, we'll talk about John and Revelation and Galatians when you answer why you don't have three witnesses to your Masoretic version. It is a violation of Torah. It is a violation of Devorim 19. You come to me to try to steal me from eternal life and from the gift of Yahweh through Messiah Yeshua, the blessed son of Yahweh. I, will, I am willing to listen to your lies if you bring three credible witnesses. I can bring three for every one I'm sharing. You can only bring one. I'm sorry. Go down and knock on the next door. We ought to start treating these websites the way we are trained to teach, the, to, 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 to deal with the Watchtower folks. Yeah. The way you deal with the Watchtower folks is the way you ought to deal with these anti-missionaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because your, your antennas are up with the Watchtower, but they, these folks, oh man, they know how to make matzo ball soup. They can't be wrong. <laughs> they know how to make the filter fish. They can't be wrong. <laughs> Every time I crack a joke, well, religious folks get uptight, I can see. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing this at a conference, maybe in the shul, but back in Miami Beach, but but not in the confidence. <laughs> Devarim 32.8. Devarim 32.8. This is very interesting. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of the children of Israel. Stop. Uh, I've read this a million times and it made no sense, but I didn't know it made any sense. It makes no sense. Let's read it again, you'll see that it makes no sense. Now, is this in the Masoretic? Of course it is, because it's in your English translation, which is based on the Middle Age Masoretic, which they claim, who, they claim who's the editor of the Middle Age Masoretic? Ezra. Uh-huh. Right on. Yeah. And uh, Fidel Castro was the good humor man. <laughs> Tevarim 32.8 When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, okay, now when did he separate the sons of Adam? Those of you who know your Torah. Back in Beratius 9, Beratius 10, when he divided the nations. When did he divide the nations? But after the flood, back in Beratius 9 and Beratius 10, he divided, we all agree on that. Now it says here that he appointed the boundaries of the nations back in Genesis 10 according to the nation of Israel. Huh? How could he divide the nations in Genesis 10 when Israel didn't become Yahweh's son until Mount Sinai in Exodus 4? It says here he divided the nations based on the people of Israel. 
no one problem. There was no people of Israel. <laughs> Woo! Mr. Anti-Missionary not looking too good right now. <laughs> Does any of this make sense? In other words, when Yahweh divided the nations in Genesis 10, right after the flood, Israel was not a nation. Israel didn't become a nation until Mount Sinai. But oh, we, we do solve this problem in the original Masoretic, which was the, the source, the base source for the Septuagint and the Brit Hadashah. Here's the way it goes. Ready? In the in the original Masoretic and Septuagint and Dead Sea Scrolls, it reads as follows. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, uh, he set the boundaries of the peoples according to the angels of Elohim. Oh, wow. Meaning the angels did the assigning of the geographic boundaries of all the nations after the flood. A little bit different. Were there angels at the time? of Genesis 10. The whole flood came about because of unclean angels. Of course there were angels, Melochim, in the days of the flood. That's why the flood came, because of the unrighteous Melochim. So when Yahweh divided the boundaries, he did so according to the number of the um, Melochim of Elohim. Because at that time there was no Israel. Because at that time there was no Jacob. That makes sense? You can't have Israel without having Jacob. True. True? Right. Exactly right. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So the Baruch HaDashah lines up with the LXX. The LXX lines up with the original Hebrew. We've got the principles. So the, the anti-missionary, as we discussed, is completely... He won't share this with you. Even if he, doesn't, if he knows it, he won't share it with you. And he may not even know it because they're programmed. <laughs> they have an agenda. Their agenda is to score points. In the Talmud it says, Yeshua HaNefesh, Yeshua HaOlam. The one who saves a soul, saves the whole world. And when they take you away from Yeshua, that's their version of building the kingdom. And they've taken that soul away from, from Christianity, brought it into traditional Judaism, and in their Talmudic understanding, they've done the greatest mitzvah. Greater than Shabbat, greater than Moadim, when they take a Messianic believer, Ephraimite or Jew following Torah, bring you away from Yeshua, that is a greater mitzvah than the Moadim and Shabbat, and they're going to get those mitzvahs, they're going to get those brownie points, they're going to get those, those special crowns, and we are their target. Mm -hmm. One more, please, and then I'll take a few questions. Tehillim 40 and 6. Can I do one? Would that be all right with you guys? One more? Yeah. Want some time to pray? But, oh, 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 I just got... Go ahead. Just go. Okay. Tehillim 40, verse 6. We got enough tape, Tehillim? Yes. Yes? Toiv. Toiv. You know why I'm so happy? You know why I'm so I'm so overjoyed? Because I know who, I know who I believe, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him, 2 Timothy 1.12, against that day. I know in whom I have believed. I don't need a website to straighten me out or to get knowledge or to get truth. And that's shocking. You don't even need your arms to Israel for that. You should use your arms to Israel to confirm what the Ruach HaKodesh is already doing in your life. Tehillim. 40 and 6. Tehillim 40 and 6. Here's the Masoretic. Slaughtering and meal offering you did not desire. You have opened my Oznaya and burnt offering and sin offering you did not ask for. Okay? But guess what? According to Hebrews 10.5, quoting Psalm 40, Verse 6, it doesn't talk about opening ears, it's talking about a body prepared for burnt offering and sin offering. So in the anti-missionary Masoretic text, stone edition, Psalm 40, verse 6 and 7 says, Slaughtering a meal offering you did not desire, so you opened my ears to your Torah. And they even add the words Torah, which is not even in the rabbinic Masoretic, but they even added more to the rabbinic Masoretic. <laughs> You can imagine that. They've already redacted and redacted what was already redacted. <laughs> Why? Why? Why would they take this liberty to change the word of Yahweh? Well, go to Ephraim 10.5 and you'll understand. Because they had to come up with a way to counter this. The author of Hebrews quotes Psalm 40, verse 6.